Hi everybody, my name is William Michael Forbes. I'm a spiritual medium and channel, and I brought a special surprise for my YouTube channel members today and those who they end up sharing and subscribing the video to. This is a meditation video channeled by the Divine Council of Light that was uh, given inside our uh, current course we're teaching called Mediumship uh, 102 course, where we train people how to connect to their guides, their angels, and other dimensional beings. Um, this video is targeted specifically for training you to move your awareness into and be in the present moment. My guides have told me the reason they're doing this is because humanity is not living in the present moment. They're living in their history, in the present, a past, present. And they're in the process of living in a future past. Uh, they say that we are in the process of doing this because we have not recognized how to keep our consciousness in the present moment. And so this video, they asked me to share it from the group. Uh, to my YouTube channel so that you and anybody else who comes to watch can benefit from the wisdom of the Divine Council of Light. So I encourage you to like this video, subscribe to my channel, encourage others to come watch it because we are in a paradigm of ascension, human consciousness ascension, where we move from a paradigm of, of fear into a paradigm of love. But that requires that we know how to live in the present moment, which enables us to create something completely new and different beyond what we remember, or what we think we might know based on what we remember. Um, if you want to know more about the Mediumship 102 course, there's one more day for registration left. You can go to my website to get more information and in detail about the course. It's uh, My website is www.williammichaelforbescoaching.com and you can go to that page, go down to the bottom and you'll see the courses and classes there and you can click on Mediumship 102 and get all the details. But tomorrow is the last day of registration. I encourage you to uh, come and join us. This is an amazing movement we're part of. Um, enjoy the video and have yourself a wonderful, joyful day. Much love. Good morning, everyone. I'm just going to wait a few minutes until some of you arrive before we begin this first activity of being in the present moment and setting the stage for the rest of this week for you to experience an awareness of yourself that you may never have experienced before, or maybe you have, and will experience it in a more pronounced fashion. Hello, Laurie. Mm. Hello, Christopher. Hi, glad everybody's coming on. Wonderful. Hi, Lorraine. Wonderful. I'm just giving everybody a chance to get involved here because we're going to be doing a short meditation, not immediately, because they, they want me to cover a few things and ex explain the overall uh, concept to you in language. But they also want me to communicate their vibration of this knowing to you. Hello, Chico. And there's a difference between conceptualizing an idea and knowing the idea that you are conceptualizing. Hi, Alexandra. There's a difference, and repeat that, there's a difference between conceptualizing an idea and knowing the idea that you are conceptualizing. Hi, Anita. There are three three things I want to accomplish this morning. Um, one of them is to um, connect you to the knowing of the present moment. Not the thinking of it, not the wondering about it, but the being of the present moment. Hello, Hane. Uh, that's one aspect. Another aspect is we're going to do a short meditation. And the third aspect is we're going to uh, bring a couple of people on live towards the back end of this so that they have a chance to articulate not only their experience, but they also have the opportunity to come live and begin that practice. I have no idea, my team says it's not a big deal, uh, that what happened to the video on how to go live yesterday. Um, I can import the video on how to go live from the 101 course, which I will do uh, shortly after we finish this alive today. The, the, the excitement that we are feeling for all of you is boundless. The joy in our hearts that we wish you to feel, which is truly who you are, shall become more obvious as a felt experience to you, providing you're willing to allow yourself to be empty. And by being empty, we do not mean that you will be uh, hollow. <laughs> Uh, because that's a mental conception, but that you will be spacious, you will be unbounded by your former conceptions of what you think your life is supposed to be about. 
we uh, had said to William earlier today that you cannot um, be filled until you are emptied. You cannot feel the vastness, the limitlessness of your being until you are empty of what you think you are being. To truly engage the presence of the moment, and we're going to stress this term, to truly engage the present of this moment, is to empty yourself, to divest yourself of um, a small sense of identity that really has very little to do with who you really are. And our goal during this hour is to reconnect you at the various degrees that you allow yourself to, to the presence of your own being, which is far more magnificent and infinitely more playful than the uh, self that you think you are. He had mentioned that in the beginning, how you conceive of an idea is very different than how you shall experience an idea. And our goal is to teach you more through experience than uh, mentating or trying to understand it or figure it out with your mind, but to experience it directly from your own experience. Uh, this is a common theme and a common practice in the realm of um, those aspiring to reach the level of ascension, of uh, deliberate conscious intention that enables them to fulfill purpose on a scale that most human beings rarely engage. We have uh, observed some of you stepping your feet into the water and getting a little cold and pulling back because of your uncertainties, which aren't really your uncertainties, but you have chosen to adopt them, and it's time to divest yourself of those adoptions so that you can begin to uh, unravel the presence of yourself um, in the moment. Being in the present moment is more than just a word or a thought. It is a state of your beingness, which is always in the present moment. Uh, our goal here is to help you set aside those things that would continue to hold you back from recognizing this. It is kind of like uh, you are this cosmic egg and if you put pressure on that cosmic egg, it cannot break. Like a regular egg is very, very strong and you put a lot of pressure at a certain point and that egg will not break. Uh, we are attempting to move you from this sense of limited identity to those two points where that which is above you and that which is below you will apply pressure to your consciousness but expand it at the same time. The pressure will be to that finite self that you call your ego to kind of pack it away neatly into a quiet space of your mind and allow yourself to be articulated as you truly are to some degree. Being in the present moment allows you to listen, it allows you to hear, it allows you to communicate without being distracted by anything that would occur around you or within you. And in truth, everything that you could perceive is not perceived from the event that you are perceiving, but from a perspective of beingness that does not identify itself with either the experience or the events of the experience. It just is. You just are. To bring yourself to that place is actually very simple and it can be done in an instant. Uh, there are some schools of thought that call this the holy instant. Uh, but we would say that it is a whole instant that is one single awareness of being that encompasses all other points of what you call time and space. It is our awareness of these things that allows us to communicate with so many of you simultaneously because we do not see ourselves in the finite uh, constructs that many of you are currently existing in uh, and you might say suffering and struggling in unnecessarily. To step out of that place, we first recommend that you have this fluid water that you put into your body. Very important.
Sometimes we need to put two or three liters into this body in the span of an hour because the, the energy that's conducted through it is electrically higher in potential than what most people ever achieve. That electrical potential restructures the genetic map of the form to match the frequencies, codes, and information that we wish to transmit. Equally so, as you are um, hydrating your system properly, you will also receive information, codes, vibrations that will reset your system to match these new frequencies. So we encourage you to take a glass of water or your favorite drink that is um, healthy for you. But we encourage you to put something in your form that increases the way in which it can distribute electrical energy, the way it can receive electrical energy, and the way it can transmit electrical energy. And we also recommend that you get into a position that you're fairly comfortable in. Because when we complete this process, you will feel the difference. You will feel the difference during the process. And our goal again here is to get you connected to that which you are already connected to, but in a fashion where you know that you know, and you're no longer seeking to know that which you already do, what you already be, what you already have. But the seeking is only from the perspective of looking at yourself from a very small point of consciousness and looking out on this vastness. And you keep thinking the vastness is out there in the stars and the vastness is out there around you. But no, it's the other way around. The vastness is within you. But in order to know that, you need to experience that. So we encourage you to be very, very relaxed. Make certain that you will not be disturbed, or at least if there is events and things going on around you that you do not allow your attention to go to them, but allow those events to be simply background noise. Much the same way as you will hear children playing in a playground while you may be doing dishes or while you are resting in the lawn and reading a book. Now, you don't pay attention though you're aware of it. It just does not take you away from the task at hand. And we encourage you to approach it from this, this event today from this perspective also. Um, so let us begin. There is this place between your ears that can be very small but can be very big. That when you can quiet that down and bring yourself into this moment where there is a level of your experience of being, your experience of knowing that does not constitute the shrinking of your perception down to a finite point, but rather expands your awareness of events of time and space and matter around you in such a fashion that it does not diminish your awareness of self, nor does it diminish your capacity to be aware of any of those aspects of which you are not attached to, but of which you are aware. And so we encourage you to take a moment and just listen with your ears to that which is going on around you. Take a moment to allow your eyes to show you what they see around you. Take a moment to let your body rest into this moment. Can you notice those things that seem to try and grab your attention? Are you willing to let it go? Are you willing to let go of that which attempts to grab your attention? Because there are many things grabbing your attention throughout your day. And those things, when they grab your attention, take you from this to this. And yet you can remain here and still attend to all these different things. And the goal today is to learn the fundamental uh, purpose behind being in the present moment. It is not to get rid of anything. It's to become aware of all things. To become aware that you are uh, undistracted and unlimited in your capacity to interact with time, space, and matter, and also with that which is not of the time, space, and matter that your mind currently understands reality to be. The form in which you find yourself at this moment 
is in fact a finite mechanism through which you may express infinite possibilities. But in order to recognize that, it is important to know how to let go of that which is not that. To know how to put aside anything that gets in your way of being that which you are. Which is love. This is true. You are love. And it is important when you know that, it changes that which you will articulate as a physical manifestation of your limitless being while you are in this playground. And so we encourage you to breathe now. Take a deep breath and breathe into this moment. And let your breath bring you into this moment. Give your body permission to relax into this moment. It's not something you have to try to do. Just allow your body to relax. It is your servant. It will listen. You can even breathe. Take a deep breath right now. Your body will not argue. And as you exhale, your body will not argue. It is yearning for you to take care of it properly. So breathe again. Your body will not argue. And as you exhale, your body will not argue. It needs you to take care of it. Give it permission to relax. Give your body complete permission to relax. You may, if you so choose, close your eyes, but allow your body to completely relax. If it wants to do or be anything else, just tell it not this time, later. It is time that you retrain your physical organism to know its place relative to you. And in order for that to occur, it is important that you train your form with love and kindness and respect. And giving your body permission to relax deliberately during this time is giving it the opportunity to release its fear and its uncertainty and its discomfort. For as you allow the muscles in your face to relax, or you allow the muscles in your shoulders to relax, or you allow the muscles in your arms and chest to relax, it releases the body from many things that are unconscious to you that your body has been required to carry. And now just let it relax. Assure your body it's okay to relax. And breathe yourself again into the moment. Breathe your awareness into this moment. And as you exhale, allow all of the muscles in your body to relax deeper. It is important to stay present with us as we will walk you through this, but allow your body to relax deeper. And notice that the body actually enjoys relaxing. Let the tension out of your legs and stomach. Give your body full permission to relax. And tell your body to continue relaxing as you move your awareness to a space in the middle of your head. and allow yourself to be aware of that space 
in the middle of your head. Become aware of any thoughts or ideas or information that you observe within the space. And now it is time to ask your mind to relax, to give your thoughts permission to be still. Give all the thoughts and sensations and awarenesses in your mind permission to be still. Tell them you'll pick them up later, but for now it's okay for them to be still. Breathe stillness into your mind. Breathe stillness into your mind. And exhale all thought from your mind. Breathe a feeling of stillness into your mind. And exhale any remaining thought, awareness or idea from your mind other than the stillness. Pay close attention to the sensations your body feels with the stillness. And ask your body to relax and receive the stillness. If you hear any background noise in the space of your mind, just make this sound. Shh. Feel how you feel in stillness. Allow the stillness to expand around your body. Allow the stillness to permeate every cell and molecule in your body. Allow yourself to be stillness. Allow yourself to expand the stillness around your body. A 
allow the stillness to penetrate your physical brain. Feel how the marrow in your bones responds to the stillness. Any time your attention is captured by a thought or a memory, let the thought or memory go and return to the stillness. Any time your mind tries to go to the future, bring it back to the stillness. Anytime a part of you tries to analyze, bring your awareness back to the stillness. Take a moment to be grateful for the stillness that you allow. Take a moment to be grateful for how your body experiences the stillness. And now give yourself permission for the next two minutes to sink deeply into this stillness. Keep bringing yourself back to the stillness.
going deeper. Breathe the stillness into all of the molecules of your body. Allow the sensation to expand around your body. Make note of how it feels to be in this state of being. Feel the feeling. Feel it in your body. Feel it in your brain. Feel it in the space around your body. And know that during the rest of this day, observe the contrast between your stillness and that which is not still, so that you can learn and remember to return to this present moment, which is always now. It is important that you have experience to know that which you can focus your attention upon. So we encourage you to breathe deeply and bring your awareness back into this present moment. Bring your body more fully into this present moment. Allow yourself to feel the vibration in the molecules of your body at this moment. Does your body feel more or less gratitude? Is your mind quieter? Are you more contented? Bring yourself back to this present moment and gently return to the body Open your eyes gently, and we encourage you to take your exercise book and write in what you are currently experiencing for a moment. Write down your experience of this moment, of this process, so that you have the words that match who you are put to the experience, so that you build a frame of reference into your physical mechanism that it will remember and understand and that you will remember and understand. So bring yourself back in this present moment. Breathe it all in. Breathe the moment in. Breathe the memory and the experience in consciously. So they're telling me now that 
that this, um, your experience of the present will expand as you allow yourself to um, uh, immerse yourself in the vibration of the feeling, not in the interpretation of the words. They're saying that the, the words are merely to give your mind a frame of reference to hook up to the experience so that when you need to, you can use the word as a trigger for the experience or the memory of the experience as a trigger for the word. So that you have a place, a doorway built into your physical and mental framework that will allow you to um, access the state more quickly and easily. So write down or keywords of what your experience is in your body and your, in your emotional state. And use this as if, it, if you find that this took you to a really delicious place and they're saying everybody got some degree of that. Uh, whatever that is, whatever your degree of that is, make note of it, feel it, own it. You, your willingness to allow it uh, is your willingness to be it. I like that. <laughs> your willingness to allow it is your willingness to be it. Um, thank you. I love the Divine Council Light. They are just the most exquisite group of beings that I've ever worked with. Um, as a collective um, and I know uh, John had me my guardian angel John had me set up an event for tomorrow which I'm really excited about too um, the goal for today was to give you an, an inner knowing of not just the idea but the experience of silence of being in the moment of having your body surrender to you in the moment having your mind turn to be still in the present moment. They're saying this is very important that you experience this because we cannot give you words that will give you the experience, but we can give you words that if you use them effectively and feel the vibration properly, you'll incorporate it as a living experience for yourself to use as, to use as um, uh, your, your measuring stick for understanding the experience that you are learning how to generate for yourself. Okay. They're also saying that throughout the day, uh, make note on where you see more of that feeling around you. Because they're saying when you, when you start to incorporate uh, new frequencies into the form and the mind, those frequencies get transmitted into our material world around us. And it's important that you make note of those things. Uh, um, Norm and I spoke about the evidence journals on uh, Sunday. It's important to have an evidence sheet. I, I, use, I usually carry a dollar, a dollar store notepad that I can keep in a shirt pocket or an inner jacket pocket or my satchel. And when something I need to make note of that I know I'll forget later, I make write it in there. Oh, uh, a bird just landed on the, t the table right beside me where I was in a state of deep peace. And it looked at me and I could feel it saying to me, could you give me some of those crumbs? And so I gave it some crumbs. You begin to know what the moment calls for. And I promise you, um, as you start to be in the moment, you will know how to be in the moment. It won't, you won't be guessing. You start to remove the guesswork from your state of being and you start to be the being that is you. And you always, at that level, you will always know what to say and do in any situation or circumstance. It is something we all innately know but now you're becoming a place, coming to a place where you're stepping out of the paradigm of what you've been taught to think you're supposed to be and into a paradigm of what you are, which you always have been. It's kind of a resolvable paradox. It will make more sense as you gain evidence for what you're experiencing. But whatever your experience of today is uh, of the present moment, it will be reinforced rigorously uh, throughout this week so that you, on your own meditation and, and yeah, uh, they want me to be very clear on this point, it is important that you may or may not use what you are experiencing today as a framework for articulating yourself into the present moment. But it is essential that for at least 20 minutes every day you spend in meditation, going into that place of silence, keeping your body in a place of surrender to you, keeping your mind in stillness and learn to just be in the present moment. And they're saying you can hear distractions and things going on, but do not let your mind go to them. Do not let your body react to them because they're, 
their, 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 the necessity of these things, of this body and this mind, is such that it is designed to protect itself from that which could be a threat to it. But you certainly know that uh, if you could hear a car driving by outside during your meditation, that that's not something that's a threat to you, although your body might perceive it that way. You must learn to articulate your body to surrender, knowing that you will take care of it. Surrender it for that 20 minutes. Let your body and mind be undistracted. Keep them relaxed and quiet. To your thoughts, if they come to your mind, or you start to try to remember something, or you start to try to wonder about what's next, you just have to say, no, I'm going to stay right here in this moment. I, as as uh, Norma said the other day, I wonder what I will think of next. If your mind is very loud and very busy, you can ask your mind, I wonder what I will think of next. And your mind will start looking for what's next. And the truth is, when your mind starts looking for what's next, there is nothing next, unless you're remembering something from your past. Um, they're very clear on, on the methodology here, that you will each find... Um, the connection to the frequencies that are most conducive for the physical and mental architecture that you work with, you will find the frequency that's most effective for that. Because every single form is slightly different in its constitution than every other form. And so we would, uh, yeah, yep. We would encourage you to be mindful of that, that your form is not to be compared to that of anybody else's, for there is only one, one uh, signature of uh, you in this physical dimension in that form. There is a, although on a, another relative perspective of consciousness, we are all united as one, but that's not quite where you are right now. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to, yeah, we're going to change a couple things up now. We're going to, I'm going to bring somebody on in a moment, and and uh, this person's been trying to go live for some time, and I think she managed to get on once, and I encourage you. You can send me an invitation to join. If you have not gone live, there's a little, um, if you're using your smartphone, and you can only do this with smartphones or iPhones, where you have your phone on landscape, uh, and uh, if you're in the live, if your phone is already on landscape, you've got icons along the bottom that give you options. One of those options is to um, uh, send an invitation to me, and I can bring you on. So if you have not come live, or you haven't experienced going live, Walk through the fear, because the fear is just a lie that's keeping you in prison to it, a small model of yourself, um, and, and join me. So I'm going to see if I can find this, this wonderful soul and bring her on. Let's see. I believe the list is in here. I'm just looking for her now. There we are. Okay, I don't see, I don't see a way to invite her on at the moment. So... But I do want to bring somebody on right now, regardless. So when you come on, I'm coming on, it's perfectly fine. This is about articulating your experience of your experience today and then being willing to share that with others. Because in order to connect your guides and your angels and your maps, it's important you have your mind very, very quiet. And when your mind is quiet, you will hear so much more. You can literally dial into, tune into any being on any dimension, any point of time or space. And provided your frequency is high, those beings will also be on that frequency. Uh, we talked about vibrational foods. Enhancing or diminishing the quality of your frequency is important to keep your frequency high. So you can attune to vibrations and beings that are at that frequency as well. It's uh, Remember, it can take one to two minutes to add a person in during live. But we're, again... They told me that we were going to articulate a bunch of different things here today in a very short time frame, which they seem to be able to do very effectively because um, we don't map this out. It's already imaged out. They call it imaging it out. Um, it's okay. We'll bring somebody else on here. Finite limitations of who you've been taught to think you're supposed to be and to begin to articulate... Uh, the, the full measure of who you truly are. And as more of us get to that place of connecting to our higher selves, our source, getting closer to our divine team and being able to communicate on those frequencies, we begin to affect massive changes in this physical dimensions towards love. And ultimately that's the goal of this, this whole movement. And this is just one small grain of sand of a vast global movement that's underway right now with the ascension process 
to awaken love's consciousness into the physical expression of humanity. And again, you're under no obligation or requirement to come live, but the goal here is to, to share our experiences, to learn and grow together with each other. So done from that perspective, it would be wise to take every opportunity you can to step outside of the limitations of what you think your life is. Uh, into that, thank you. Very important to drink lots of water. They often remind me, I'm still, I'm still learning how to do it. I'm still training my body to know that it's supposed to do that. It says, still adding, we'll give another one. Hi, Philomay. Philomay is one of our mediums. Jennifer, hi, Jennifer. Anna, I can take questions while I'm waiting to bring somebody else on live about what your experience with this experience was. If you've got any questions about it, please don't hesitate to post them up. All right. Okay, let's bring, it still says adding. Now, if it's still adding, it's been almost a minute and a half now. Uh, that may mean they're off to the washroom. If they're not responding, they could have gone, could have gone to the washroom. Uh, they could have, they could be in a deep trance state right now, just on another dimension, experiencing the fullness of this. We don't know. I'm going to uh, bring somebody else on. I really want everybody to get the opportunity to your experience, the experience. It's important to articulate it and share it. Hi, Louisa. Hey. How are you? Hi. Hey. Yes, I'm just good. Let me turn my volume up a bit. There we go. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay, huh? Yes, very good. You hear me as well? I am terrific. Thank you for asking. Um, so today was about being, being in the present moment. That was the goal for them to give you an opportunity to experience yourself in the present without any distractions. Um, and I, it sounds like you had lots of opportunity to do that. <laughs> you mean the back, the sound on the on the background? <laughs> That's great. So, so t yeah. tell me a bit. Tell me a bit about how you experienced that that short meditation of being in the present moment. It was um, a sort of in between phase. I almost fell asleep, but if I could correct that, it was an emptiness. Mm -hmm. What what quality, if you could add an emotional quality to that emptiness, what would that emotional quality be? Mm. Sort of uh, openness, but openness. that's not so clear to me. Does, does, does openness feel better for you or not better for you? Yes. So it feels both. When you when you experienced your openness, did that openness mm -hmm. feel? Uh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. I don't say so well. It was it was. Um, I, I I I don't know exactly. Yeah. That's okay. Even if you don't know, that could be a really good thing. It means your mind can't yeah. interpret. It. Your mind can't impose what it remembers. And that's the other thing. But when you start to move into the present moment, your mind uh, is no longer being engaged as an interpreting mechanism of your experience. Because the mind likes to interpret everything. likes to figure everything out. Yes. Right? Yes. So when, you're step, when you start to step outside of that, the mind goes, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm used to thinking about the past. I'm used to worrying about the future. Now... Now you're asking me to not do nothing. And it really feels really, a bit like that. It's like that. Yes. Yeah. Now, how do you feel in your body right now? How does it feel in your body right now? Mm. Um, yeah, at the moment, it's different than it was just when we did the exercise. But I mm. felt, yeah, I'm relaxed. And, um, yeah. Now, what did you feel when you breathed the silence into the marrow of your bones? Mm. I cannot recall that really. That's okay. 
That's a, that's actually very that's actually a very normal phenomenon. When you start to step outside of the frame of reference you think you are, uh, it doesn't have a memory of what happened outside of itself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. If we step outside of what we think we know, what we've been taught to believe our reality is, we step outside of it, then this reality has no knowledge of that which is outside of it, but you have an experience of it. The residual mm -hmm. in your case is an experience of uh, it feels your body feels a little better, correct? Yes. Yeah. So there'll always be residual in the system for you to process. That's why we have you write stuff down. That's why they said write your experience down, what your general state is physically, mentally, emotionally, so that you have a reference point that you're going to be building on this week because we're going to really be getting you guys so deeply into your knowing of now that it, mm -hmm. your, your being of who you are will make more sense to you than the way you've been thinking about who you are than before. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, okay, sure. So, so Louisa, I, I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to bring somebody else on now. Thank you so much for coming on live. And uh, I look forward to working with you again. Hun. Yes, me too. <laughs> Bye. So the goal here is learning to articulate your awareness of the experience. But notice what she said there. She almost fell asleep. And that's because this, this mental mechanism, these activities, the vibrations and frequencies and, and keys that we're using, the frequency keys we're using, are not ego keys. They're not fear-based keys. They're love-based keys of frequency and energy. And your mind is not geared too much to love. It's geared more to fear or guilt or shame or the past or the future. And so when you start to step outside that, the mind does not have a framework to remember that which it, not, it, which it isn't. And um, this idea, this concept of not being your mind, of stepping outside of it, will begin to make more sense to you as you get more experience being outside of it. As you get more awareness of the self that is you outside of that framework. And you're no longer looking at yourself from the perspective of what you've been taught or conditioned to think you are or what your body is or what your life is or what your finances are when you're not in that framework anymore, you start to build in a whole new architecture for self-development that's outside that old framework. So sometimes you'll think, oh, I didn't, I fell asleep, right? I don't remember. Not have, it didn't hear, it didn't see, it didn't smell, it didn't touch and taste and experience that it didn't have, because it didn't. Uh, they're saying to me, we take you away from this in a very unique way so that this does not interfere with your touching on yourself in a whole new way. <laughs> Wonderful. People that haven't gone on live, notice that I'm, when I'm bringing people on, I can see them. Hi, Anita, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm terrific, thank you. Um, Good. So talk a bit about what your experience of that was as you, as you moved into that quiet place inside. Just describe what your, your process was. Oh, I've got notes here. Um, I went into a real deep peace, um, a real feeling of acceptance, and very blissful. Mm. So I got a really blissful feeling towards that. I have a tendency to do this quite often before I go to bed at night. So it's very similar to what I go through anyway in the evening. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was very, very much that way. So I'm, I'm very curious. familiar. Okay. When you breathe the silence into the marrow of your bones, what did you remember feeling? Um, I get uh, almost, I could feel everything kind of coming alive in my cells, like mm -hmm. almost like vibrating. Yes. I get that feeling. Yeah. And when you expanded that feeling out around your body, what was the sensation around your body? Uh, it, it just felt more, there's more peace spreading outward from me was the feeling I got. Okay. Now, were you aware of the feeling around you from inside or were you aware of the feeling around you from outside the feeling? Inside. Okay. Yeah. So it was like you, you were the, you were the nucleus and that feeling was expanding out from you, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, wonderful. And if you could give that sensation an emotional quality, what would you give it? Uh, peaceful and blissful was my, my feeling towards that. 
very deep peace and bliss. Now, notice how you feel when you speak those words, peace and bliss. Can you feel what they do in your body when you speak them? Yes, I can. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Remember, as you become more centered, as we become more centered in the moment, your awareness of how your words and your thoughts affect energy in your body and the space around you become more apparent you will uh, feel very precisely when you say a, a, a word that's got a negative connotation to it, it'll have a different vibration in your body in the space around you than, than a, a positive one. And you become more acutely aware. That puts you in a position to begin to want to change or re-articulate the types of thoughts you're thinking because you go start to feel that, oh, if I think that, I feel this way. If I, and and I, I'm putting that energy in the space around me. You, it'll become clearer and clearer as we go through this, this particular first week. Um, Anita, um, what, what would you suggest to somebody that's um, um, not come live before and they've just come into the course, but they need to go live, they need this experience, what would you suggest to them? Go for it. Just go for it because it is going to reduce your stress level yeah. each you time. When you yeah. You remember when you first started? Yes. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and now, now let me ask you a question. That terrified, who was that? Uh, my ego self, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and it is. It was your body and your mind interpreting a new situation, a new environment, possibly a potential threat it doesn't understand, and, and it's reacting to protect us. Your body is hardwired to protect you from that which, which it does not know. Like, yeah. Oh, I don't know, I don't know what the heck that's going to do to me, so I'm not going to go near it. Right. And you, can watch that, you can watch that with birds and, and animals and nature where something different than what they're normally used to occurs and their whole being changes. And our bodies are animal bodies. It's not who you are. You are living in an animal body. Please remember that. And it will react to different opportunities and situations like an animal does. So mm -hmm. be prepared when your animal's going, oh, my God, they want me to go live. You got to say, no, no, it's okay. You're perfectly safe. You're not going to die. <laughs> No. Right? And, and you go through it, right? But you yeah. have to learn to train it. I'm so grateful yeah. you came on today, Anita, because it's really important that, that you can articulate what you experienced to others to, to inspire them as well. So I'm going to bring somebody else on, and, All um, right. and, then, and then I'm going to take on some questions after that. Have an awesome and joyful day, Anita. You too. Bye. I will. Bye, hon. Wow. This is so cool. The, uh, the process of letting go gets easier and easier the more you work. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Good. How are you? I'm terrific. Thank you so much for coming on live. This is our, I think this is our first time coming live together. It is. It is. I, I just dropped my son off at summer camp. It's about 9 a.m. here. And um, I'm glad I made the last few minutes of the, this. Uh, I'm sorry I missed everything, but I'll watch the replay. Yes, the, re the replay will make a lot of sense to you okay. when you have a chance to go through it. But I'm really grateful that you stepped up and you came on live because this is the hardest part for everybody, really. Once, yeah. you, once, you, once your body realizes nothing's going to jump out of the screen and attack you and tear you to pieces, yeah. your body will feel safe, right? Yeah, yeah. There's just a few little steps that I had to figure out about um, uh, which way to hold the phone. And I got the tripod all worked out and my earphones and all those little things. And it's all good. Yeah, and it will take time. Remember, those of you that, that, are, that are other people that are new to the course, and I think we've got five or six of you that are brand new to the course, it's a learning curve. Be fearless. Even if you do, we don't mind mistakes. We love mistakes because you learn and grow from them. Um, mm -hmm. And you, it's just your body that's afraid something bad's going to happen if I make a mistake. Your body is trying to tell you something might hurt it. Yeah. That's a lie. That's a lie. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a lie from the perspective of who you truly are. It's a truth based on what your body remembers from millions of years of genetic memory stored in the system, right? Yeah. It remembers that it, it remembers 20 lifetimes ago when that elephant trampled it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And everyone in this group is so friendly and supportive. I, um, yeah. you know, you feel that. So there's nothing to be scared of. Yeah, and and, and we've asked everybody in the group that that's that's become really good at doing this to to open up to all of, of you guys to bring you on and show you. And we got, I cannot tell you how blessed. We are you have such an amazing group of people. It's been really amazing. So yeah. what you did, what you did, what did you catch of this? Where did just you come in? the last, uh, just the last person that was on. I just, I, that's it. I didn't get any of it yet. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you something that, that because you're part of this group, 
even if you came in at last night, I'm going to show you something right now, really quickly. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, please. Okay, so I want you to place your right hand on the heart, over your heart, and just, just feel what you feel happening there now. Can you feel it? Yes. Okay, really put yourself into it. Allow that feeling to spread throughout your body. That's it. And really feel this moment. That's it. Now breathe that moment deep into your body. And breathe it into your head. As you exhale, think the words, thank you. And feel how that affects your form. And describe the feeling you have right now. And just um, love and gratitude. Mm -hmm. uh, everywhere. Can you, yeah, can, so you can feel it around your body too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you, feel, can you feel it behind your body? All, all around my body, beneath, above, all, all around. Now, I'm just curious, um, do you have a particular um, guide or angel that you've been interested in connecting with? Um, well, the three that I've been working with are Archangel uh, Metatron and Michael, and Archangel Michael and Jesus. Yes, yes. So just take a moment to call on Archangel Michael. And feel how the energy around your body responds. I just feel wrapped in a cocoon of um, love. Okay. Remember what you just did because that you can call on the other ones and see how their energy in, interacts with yours that way. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, perfect. So just bring yourself back in here. That's just a short thing I want you to, to grasp so you can start really sensing the energies now. And again, my team is hooked up with your team and everybody else's team here, so we're working in a really profound, well, you know Metatron, but he's like that, he's very unlimited he, in his capabilities. I'm starting um, to see that. Um, <laughs> go to, go to, go to the replay right, right after we're done, because I have to get going, because I'm, I'm okay. running past my hour now. Mm -hmm. Watch the replay, I recommend everybody watch the replay. If you've got any questions or concerns, please, please post them in the comment section. I will get back to them in about an hour, and I'll be able to go over all the questions then. I want to wish everybody much love, and thank you for taking the time to come out today. And you're going to have a blast this week. I can, thank I can you. feel it. Metatron, he's going, watch this girl go. Watch this girl go. So, okay. so everybody, thank you for coming in today. I will see you guys tomorrow morning, and we have um, uh, a surprise coming for you tonight live. That'll be fun. Uh, enjoy that. Please look at the events section of the group so you can check off the um, uh, events. Again, I'm trying to bring William back in here, and, and William and, and them. It's very interesting. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank Much you. Love. Much love. Bye. You're welcome. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye. Listen, everybody, thank you for coming out. Have an awesome, joyful day. I'll take care of your questions in no time. Much love.